Welcome everyone to a new tutorial. This is a design based on a request from several of my subscribers who are wanting to make stones to sell for the holidays. And they said that the pink ribbon stone is a very popular one and they wanted to know what my take on this design would be. So let's show you how I did it. I took a clip art from the internet and I copied it and then I put it in the um, copier again and reduced it to a size to fit the stone. And I also copied the stone and reduced it about 15% so I could trace it and have a, a little bit of an edge around the outside of the stone. And I made sure both of those fit. And the reason that I copy the stone is that every stone is a different shape. Some are round, some are weird oblong shapes, and this just assures that you get uh, the same edge around all the way to stone. Now you can paint the inside with any color of your choice. I decided to go with brown because I like brown and pink together, and I think it's a little bit softer background than the black. So I painted this in, allowed it to dry, and then I fit my uh, little pink ribbon that I cut out from the paper on there and it fits right in the space. Trace that with a white charcoal pencil and I'm just continuing to add the lines here to create the 3D effect for the ribbon. These are going to be my guidelines and also continuing that up along the top edge. This just gives it more definition. So now that I have the guidelines on there, I'm going to outline all of the white guidelines with my Golden Fluid Iridescent Gold paint. And I'm doing this with my manicure stylus with the small end and just making dots along the side here. And we're going to dot the entire surface of that to outline the ribbon and then also outlining the background color. And make sure if you <laughs> make a mistake to have some q-tips handy. I didn't like the spacing on those dots so I just wiped them off and started again. I'll be listing these paint colors in the comments but I just wanted to show you I knew I was going to be doing several stones and I didn't want my paints to dry out because I knew it would take several days to do as many stones as I wanted to do. So I had these little bead containers that I got from Michaels and they just kind of screw together in a stack and I mixed up my paints in these and this was a great uh, way just to preserve my paints for the next day. I'm mixing them together with the end of a paintbrush and I'm going to get four different shades of pink. Now using my manicure stylus again, I'm going to fill in the space with dots. That's all you do on this. No counting, no spacing. It's just filling in your traced design. The trick is to make different sized dots by, by loading a little bit more paint onto your tool and I started with the darkest shade on the outside edges of that space and I'm filling in the middle with a little bit of a medium shade and now I'm going to the bottom of the ribbon with the darkest shade and then using the medium shade and then the light shade and then the lightest shade all the way at the top and this will give a, a gradient effect and it will eventually end up looking like a 3D ribbon. The trick with these uh, when you're filling in a space with dots is to make sure you have dots of different sizes and to pack in as many dots as possible without having them touch. So you want to make sure your paint is thick enough that it's not going to ooze out and form globs with the paint with the dot next to it and this is a very small fine point tool that I'm getting little micro dots in between the dots. Now we're going to do the ribbon that's behind the other one so I'm going to make it with the darker shade just right up along the edge and then it will go lighter toward the ends. Now that the ribbon is all dotted I'm going along the outside again in white I'm offsetting these and that means that I'm putting the dot in between the dot in the previous row. They're the same size, I'm just putting one dot in between the gold dot and then going on to the next. Now I let that dry and the reason I let it dry is just in case I make a mistake and I want to wipe it off. It's a lot easier to do if your previous row is dry. So now I'm using a slightly larger tool and I'm making pink dots 
and on these I'm skipping a dot, I'm leaving a space there. So the pink is all the way around now and I'm going to put two white dots in between the pink dots. There's just enough space to walk two dots down and this is going to end up looking like a row of beadwork, like on a, a basket. Once that was dry, I decided to use the Martha Stewart Golden Mother of Pearl, which is a translucent paint uh, for top dots. And that's going to make these pink dots look like beads once they are dry. So that is done. Um, and then I also did it in the black, just so you could see the difference. There's a lot more contrast with the black. It's a little bolder. And then I decided to try a blue background. It requires a little bit different prep here. I traced the design on there and then I'm just going to paint the inside of my background color with this sky blue. Let that dry and then I'm painting over the ribbon with black. Again using my flat edge brush to get a, a nice clean edge on that. And then I went around the outside of the rock with black, and I had already painted the backside black. So the, the blue background is really going to be setting in on this black stone. I'm filling in uh, once it was dry, just adding my my guidelines here, making sure that I've got the 3D effect. And then I'm going to outline in gold as before. And the reason I use gold instead of silver is there's more of a contrast between the pink and the gold, and it gives a, a better outline, at least to my eye. And then I dotted that in just like we did before, filled in with the pink. You can see there's a nice contrast between the pink and the blue on that. And while that was drying, um, these had already sat overnight, so I'm going to do a finishing spray. I decided to go with the triple glaze, triple gloss on those. Now I wanted to write some words on the back, and I know a lot of you were telling me you were having trouble getting nice penmanship on the back of your stones if you wanted to, to write a word or write a name. And this is a way to do it. You would simply go uh, online and use whatever font you like for whatever word you like and print it out in about the size that you would use on the stone. And then uh, you would print that and cut it out. And I have this Sorrel transfer paper in white, so I can use it. It's like a graphite paper, only it's white instead of black. So I just have a small piece of that and I'm cutting it to the size of the word that's going to fit on the stone. And then I secured that with a little piece of uh, Scotch Magic Tape. And then I used a ballpoint pen to trace the letters out. And this is going to transfer that onto the stone. And then you simply use a paint pen to go over the letters. And it, it comes out very nice. It's, uh, it's an easy way to do it if you're not real confident with your um, painting letters on the back of the stone. You can also do it on the back of a stone that's just bare stone that hasn't been painted yet. As long as the stone is dark enough, you can use the white transfer paper. This was a pretty dark uh, brown stone that was from a river. It was all stained brown. So once that's dry, I'm just wiping off any extra dust from the transfer paper and then taking it outside and spraying the backside with the clear acrylic again to finish the stone. I wanted to show you this wonderful tool that was given to me by Rachel from Land and Sky Mandalas. It's a pencil with a little bit of wax on the end and you can use it to lift up little tiny crystals and it's the most amazing tool. It's so simple but it works beautifully. And I just used a little jewelry glue there and put a pink crystal right in the center of that ribbon.
My friend Stephanie went through breast cancer and chemotherapy, and she's such an amazing woman, an amazing floral designer, and I just wanted to do a shout out to her. She's a wonderful gal, and she's a survivor. Thanks for watching, everybody.